Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the 11th T Kinter with Python 3 tutorial video. In this video, we're going to just continue working on our application. Uh, we have a few changes that we want to make um, to kind of the structure of our code, but otherwise we're ready to, to actually modify this script. So um, right now we just load up and we've got a live grab. Now these are actual prices. Look at that, man. Phew. <laughs> Pretty volatile. Um, Anyway, we got this live graph that is working, uh, but the next things that we want, if you remember the original application, we had a whole you know main menu basically up here where you could choose a whole bunch of options and stuff like that. So now what we want to do in this video and the subsequent videos, we want to set up the structure uh, for all those options in our main menu. And then once we've got the structure there, we'll actually build the back end to support that structure. And you'll see that the, the methodology that we use here is going to be fairly similar to the methodology that I've used in the past as far as building a large program. So building large programs can be really daunting, but the way that I've kind of worked around uh, how to build a large program is basically I write the program how I would like to be able to write the program basically. So so I structure everything the way I'd like it to be and I say like if I if I want to call a function I just make up the name of the function right then and there with the understanding of what I want that function to eventually do. Uh, and then later I'll come back to it. In our case, we're basically going to do, do the same thing where we kind of build the back end first because that's the, that's the real challenging part. And then later on, you can build the function to satisfy those needs. Um, and you can build the function really the exact same way, kind of almost backwards. You know, you build the completed product and then you kind of plug everything in at the end. Um, it'll hopefully make a little bit more sense as we go through it. If you've followed some of my other tutorials, um, then you should probably be somewhat familiar with my, my structuring. But Anyway, um, the first things first that I want to do is no longer do we want to do figure size at all. What, what Natplotlib is going to do in this tkinter application is based on the rules that we set in our tkinter application, Matplotlib is actually going to automatically scale uh, to the size of our application. And what's happening here is actually our application is scaling to our tkinter window. Uh, I mean our matplotlib graph. We don't really want that. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just right up here, we're going to do from matplotlib import pyplot, pyplot as plt. Then uh, f is just going to equal figure empty parameters. We're not going to have dpi or figure size. Just boom, empty parameters. Uh, and then now we want to go to the very, very bottom of our script here. Basically right where you've got app equals C of BTC app. And what you want to add here is you just do app dot geometry, geometry. And here we can specify the size of our application. So in our case, we're going to do 1280 by 720. Now, if you're happening to follow along this tutorial and you don't have that high of a resolution, then choose something else, you know, 800 by 600 should fit everybody. I don't think anybody's following along on a cell phone. So uh, that should be fine, uh, fine enough. Um, you can also feel free to do, you know, uh, 1920 by 1080 or whatever if you want. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, I like this size. I think it's a good size, so I'm going to go with it. Anybody who has a smaller resolution, though, it, it will, you know, scrunch up the application uh, to fit. So just keep that in mind. But when it scrunches up the application, stuff does get kind of squished away, especially buttons in the tkinter application. So um, the navigation buttons for the graph will disappear, and any other buttons on the page will disappear. So just keep that uh, in mind. <laughs> so. Uh, now what we're ready to do is we're ready to go ahead and add a main menu bar. So scroll on up to uh, see if BTC app. And this is where we put a lot of the stuff that pertains just to the app in general that is going to be on every single page. And then later on you'll see that most of the functionality that we write is actually going to go within the animation function because that's where how the graph changes. And basically, anytime we want to query uh, a database or we're trying to query or maybe send in stuff, we're actually going to use animate for this, but we'll get to that. So within here, um, we're going to go ahead and after this you know, block of four containers, um, we're just going to come down here and before self.frames, um, although it could be after, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, and this is where we're going to add some code. So first, we're going to say menu bar. And menu bar is going to equal tk.capitalmmenu. 
and then container. So basically it's a menu. Where are we going to put the menu? We're putting it in the container. So the next thing that we're going to have is now, now that's the menu bar. Now we want a file menu, right? So in this application, here's our menu bar. And then we have a file where we go new or a close or exit, whatever, as if close and exit is that significantly different. Anyway, <laughs> file menu, we'll call it equals TK dot menu. And then you say, what menu does that, is it going to? It's going to the menu bar. And then we're going to say tear off equals zero. Now, um, I'll explain what tear off means in a little bit. But basically, let's see. Um, all of these are tear off. And you can even see it's this like dotted line. So we can click that usually. Yeah. So we can click that. And we can. it becomes its like own little window of options. Uh, and we can use that uh, within our application as well. So say, for example, we're going to have a trading tab soon. And we will go to trade, and then we can actually make that its own window, and then you could hit buy, sell, buy, 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 sell, or whatever you needed to do, so you can make really quick trades if you wanted to. Um, so we'll close out of that. But for the file menu, I really don't see the point why you would tear it off. But I mean, you could add that as an option on every window. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, but for now, we'll just say tear off equals zero. And then uh, the next thing we're going to do is go file menu dot add underscore uh, command, and this basically adds an option to the menu. Um, so first we're going to say label and label is going to equal, um, we're going to have this one called save settings. So pretty soon we're going to allow users to basically save a bunch of settings like what is the time frame of the data, what exchange do they care about, that kind of stuff. It maybe eventually will allow them to save their API information. Uh, the problem there is you'll have to encrypt it and decrypt it and to decrypt it you have to obviously have, uh, the public private key stuff and then pulling that we just have to make sure that's, that's totally safe and secure on their uh, computer I, I think I'd rather just have them input it and then any sort of transmission is already encrypted anyway so I'll let the user kind of decide but uh, eventually uh, we might do that but safe settings mostly for like exchange time frames stuff like that and then we're gonna have this um, since this doesn't exist yet and actually it doesn't even exist in the current uh, version as I'm filming this there's obviously the current version that I showed in the first video um, that we still don't have that and so like say you want to add something there because you really want that in your program but you don't you know have it yet um, what I'm gonna have it do is it's gonna hold a place but uh, we're gonna have the command be equal to lambda colon and then pop up message will be the uh, function and then the message is not su supported just yet. Okay. And so this is a function pop up message. We have not defined pop up message. So we definitely want to have uh, that function, but I think we'll probably do that in the next video. Um, but obviously that's a pretty useful function. So if you followed uh, like my Pi game tutorial, for example, sometimes you want to pop up uh, text to the screen. So you want to have just a function that does that. You wouldn't want to do that uh, yourself every time you needed to send a message to the screen. I think that's what I called it, message to screen. Um, so here we'll have a universal kind of pop-up message. Anytime we want to show a pop-up message, uh, we just do pop-up message, throw the text through it, and that's a pop-up. Um, so here's an example of <laughs> Um, some functionality that I would like. We don't have it yet, but this is how I'd like it to act. It'll be a function and you just pass through the string that you want it to pop up. Done. So you know what's coming. Now uh, that we've done that, uh, we're going to go file menu dot add underscore separator. Separator. Sounds about right. Um, that just adds a bar um, like this, like you've got these bar between path and save. That's like a little bar. It's like a little divider kind of to, um, cause if you don't have it there, you know, you can imagine without that divider, there's like so many options here. You might get kind of lost. <laughs> it's just too many. So it's sort of how a way to organize. So add separator and then we can do file menu dot add, uh, underscore commands now. Um, and this one will be uh, label equals exit. And then here we don't need lambda, we just do command equals quit. Done and done. Finally, uh, we can do, uh, we need to add the menu bar or the file menu to menu bar. So, so far we've basically done all this in the back end. We've defined basically what file menu is, 
but we haven't shown any, you know, we haven't placed it anywhere. So now we're gonna place it to the menu bar. So menu bar dot uh, add underscore cascade. And this one is gonna be label equals, uh, whoops. Okay, that's gonna take forever. Label equals file. So that'll be our file. And then we're gonna say the menu, wow, menu equals file menu. Wow, I really want it to be many. File menu, uh, and that's it. So now, uh, the only, only last thing that we need to do is tk dot tk, notice the capital T in the second one, dot config, and then we're gonna say self, and then menu equals menu bar. Just like that. Um, now we're going to see that this creates a slight conflict uh, with our ICO. So like when we go like this, um, oh, I didn't do it just yet. Okay, well, soon. <laughs> anyway, so we'll hit okay and cool. So here's our application uh, file. We've got save settings and exit here. Uh, we're still updating on, I think every 2000 milliseconds, so two seconds. So we'll scroll down. Uh, to the very bottom here, and so, oh wow, we're every second. <laughs> Let's do five seconds for now. Uh, in the future, what we want to do is we want to thread this application. So when that graph is updating, it's not freezing the entire application. So that'll be uh, for a video way down the road, but that will definitely be ne necessary for this uh, this uh, application. So we've got file. Now we can hit exit, and it does want to exit. It's just it launches into the shell, and then we'll hit OK. So. Uh, so that's that with uh, video 11. Um, we're going to keep adding basically all the, the file menu options in the coming videos. And then after that, we'll start adding in the functionality. Uh, so stay tuned for that where we add all the options. If you guys have any questions or comments on this specific video, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.